This is allegedly the coldest booty in the entire world. It was designed in the 50s and is still in use by some people in the military today. And it's called the bunny booty, AKA the extreme warm scientific vapor barrier extreme. And we're gonna cut it in half to see what's on the inside, how it's structured, how they make the coldest booty in the world and run. So what is this bunny? How did this booty come to be? What is the history of this booty? Well, the shortened and condensed version of it is one of the very first boots out there was the Cluck. The Cluck was basically a canvas with a lining on the inside that was a leather bottom. The problem is leather is 100% not breathable. So then the next iteration of a winter boot was their leather bottom. Once again, leather is not 100% breathable. So then they just went full on leather and finally came out with the Mickey Mouse bottom, which was the predecessor to this boot. Basically this exact same boot, but with Mickey Mouse, hence the name Mickey Mouse bottom and it was 100% not breathable. Then finally, we ended up with the bunny boot, which is the most hardy, the most breathable, the most heat retaining boot that the military has ever made. And so that's kind of the lineage of how we ended up with this boot, which is, I think is super interesting. But how warm is the bunny boot actually? Well, it was created to be the worst case scenario, quite literally the worst. A lot of civilian people just use these boot. People that are in Alaska like these booties. People that operate machinery and are operators in the winter love these booties. But according to Filson, it's not just civilians that still use this booty. According to them, the 2nd Scientific Infantry Vapor Brigade Warm Combat Team Extreme Airborne, 11th Airborne Barrier Division, stationed in Anchorage, Alaska, still uses the bunny booty today. So since these are still in active use, we thought we'd do a little waterproof test to see if there really are. And that's one of the key characteristics of this booty being, and it's caused by the fact that it's basically all rubber. It's rubber on the outside, it's leather on the inside. So why would they choose leather? Well, because it's 100% water and it's 100% not rubber and it's 100% not breathable and it's not as prone to cracking after years and years of flexing it over and over again. And being that it's a rubber boot, you maybe assume that there's a lot of synthetic materials on the inside, inside, but allegedly it's fully leather. But there are some definite cons with this booty, far from the part, the perfect booty. So even in the instruction manual, they recommend changing your socks every single day. They're mostly made for semi-stationary use. And to prove the fact that these aren't the most athletic and great for hiking or especially running, we ran a quick little test where Brody put these on, ran as fast as he could, and then ran in his tennis shoes. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of difference between how fast he could run in these boots. But how does this booty actually work? Well, the structure of the booty has a big part to do with it because you've got this big booty on the outside. You've got leather on the inside that's basically creating two different layers. And then in between, you've got several layers of foam. So essentially with those two layers, it's acting in the same way that a Yeti does, where you're trying to stave off the three types of heat transfer, radiation, radiation, and radiation. Here's a couple of random facts that are kind of interesting. Uh, um, uh, let's cut these in half. All right, we got them cut in half and pretty difficult actually to cut in half. This has got to be the craziest looking inside of a booty. This is so much leather because this, this outsole has two separate layers. Both are just under half an inch thick, making the bunny thick. Shockingly, they even got a shank in here. It's crazy. This is, now that's a shank. And it's really interesting that they have three separate shanks because this was a boot that wasn't, how do we make a boot warm? It's, it was, how do we make a boot? You can just go out and buy one of these. Obviously you're gonna look. So thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoyed this one as much as I did. I love doing these military booties.